I guess it all started in Temple, Texas. Is that right? That's right. My uh, my dad uh, was in World War II and served uh, in the European theater. And when Germany surrendered, he was sent back to Camp Hood. And he met my mother, who was a volunteer for the Red Cross, at a uh, Sunday night youth service at Avenue G Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, uh, he decided to go to Abilene Christian College. And the family moved over and stayed and lived in the old wooden barracks that were World War II barracks were had, oh, yeah. were, that had families just like that. Both of my parents, uh, strong Christians, but because of his service in World War II, that, that, that shaped my uh, appreciation for uh, my Christian faith, but also of our country. Well, uh, of course, the best memory is meeting my wife, right. Carol. That's a who, good thing. <laughs> uh, Carol was uh, also a freshman the same year we, that I was in 66. Uh, and uh, I, I loved being a student here. Uh, I was in Galaxy, president of Galaxy, and president of my class twice, and had a column in the Optimist, a uh, political column, uh -huh. uh, that I was the political editor, I guess is what I was called. The school itself, um, the, one of the best things about it were the, the professors. Uh, every class was small. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and later I went to the University of Houston and learned that the classes are massive. You don't even know who the, prof the professor doesn't know who you are. Uh, but here the, the professors knew who you were, took a personal interest in every student to make sure that we got the understanding uh, that they were teaching. That was, that was very valuable to me. My desire to be a prosecutor started in law school. And I wanted to be a trial lawyer. I wanted to be in the courtroom. And so I joined the district attorney's office. Carol Vance, the district attorney, hired me and right out of law school, I started there and uh, I thought I had died and gone to heaven being a prosecutor because I was in the courtroom every day trying cases. I've heard, and I think you alluded to it a minute ago, you really, you never lost a jury trial. That's correct. Misdemeanor or felony or capital murder. They were all convicted. Uh -huh. I wanted to be a prosecutor because uh, I wanted to, to fight for the victims of crime. I mean, they didn't have a voice in the courtroom. Right. The defendant has a voice, the defense lawyer, as, as he should or she should. But uh, I wanted to be their voice. If we were in trial. We had, the judge had recess for lunch. Uh, I usually carried a toothbrush in my pocket so I brush my teeth during lunch and come back to the courtroom. <laughs> and so we are actually in the trial, the counsel table and the defendant and the defense attorney are seat, seated at the next table over. Uh, and a witness was testifying who just really nailed the defendant. Just perfect identification. Uh, was just a great witness. And so I just took the toothbrush out and wrote a little note, rolled it up, slid it over to counsel table to the defendant. That's what they say anyway. I'm not going to admit this. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. And the note said, you're going to need this in the penitentiary. And uh, so he, he jumps up and he starts hollering. Of course, the judge didn't know what was going on. And he'd tell him to, the defendant to sit down and Anyway, that's, that's the rumor about how that nickname started, mm -hmm. and it, it may have happened more than once. President Bush uh, invited members of Congress over, usually six at a time. Well, I would drive. I wouldn't ride the van over that, you know. I'd, I'd drive my own vehicle. The last time I drove it there when President Bush was president, I was walking in the front door, and he was walking through the lobby, and he stopped. And, he called me Teddy. I, you don't need to call me that. Only the president and my grandkids could call me Teddy. He said, Teddy, did you bring that Jeep again today? And I said, yes, Mr. President, I always drive it over here. And he said, that Jeep of yours has an oil leak, and you need to get that oil leak fixed because it's depreciating the value of the property out in front. I said, yes, sir. But now I had a couple of bumper stickers on the back, but one of them was, uh, Texas is bigger than France. And that was on the back of, the, of my Jeep. over 100 years old is at the San Jacinto Monument Battlegrounds in the uh, ship channel, and it's in a bad state of repair. It's basically sinking, and it's sinking for political reasons because the state government over all these many years, well, since 1948 when Texas got the Battleship Texas, has really not done a whole lot 
to make sure that it's preserved. Therefore, uh, I, I try to do what I can on the federal level and on the state level to make sure that we have the funding to finally restore the battleship Texas. I did use probationers there for a while, mm -hmm. uh, put them in the Texas Navy, go out there and keep, keep it maintained for as, as long as we could. But it's just gotten worse. And now, uh, finally, there's going to be some uh, restoration. The state of Texas is going to spend uh, about $36 million to, to restore the battleship Texas. We got some money through the federal government uh, grants to help restore battleships that are being uh, taken care of, uh, like the battleship Texas. It's very unique. It was in World War I. It was in World War II. It was the uh, flagship of D-Day. Uh, it has a tremendous history. The buying and selling of people on the marketplace of slavery whether it's sex slavery or labor, labor slavery. And sometimes it applies to immigrants that are brought in here and, and sold all over the country. And, but most of the time, it's just people who live in the United States, primarily young females. We worked with other members of Congress and put together 11 bills that were bipartisan and passed the House of Representatives almost unanimously. Went to the Senate and the Senate put them into two bills, passed them, brought them back, and we passed them, and then President Obama signed the legislation. Major legislation, it was, it's uh, probably the legislation in our country that now will deal indefinitely with this, uh, this problem, and I, I'm, I'm proud that that legislation passed. All of this story of your life and what you've done and how you have continued to honor this university as a board member, as an alumnus, as the outstanding alumnus of the year is a great reason why we are grateful now that there is a Judge Ted Poe endowed chair of political science and criminal justice at ACU. That's going to continue the story. And now your legacy will extend. I hope there will be other ACU students in the future who will come along and they'll say, I want to be a prosecutor or a judge or a congressman like Judge Ted Poe. Well, I hope there are more, there are more people from the school who get into public service to get into politics. Politics is not a bad word. Uh, we need more solid people of faith in public service all up and down the ladder, yeah. uh, whether it's uh, in Congress or whether it's on the local school board or anywhere else. Uh, I think we have a, an obligation to be in public service and people who want to be good for them. I'm, for, I'm all for them.